So live theater isn't quite back in full force yet. So today we are previewing a new play at Seattle's Intamon Theater that will be performed virtually and all proceeds will help support the work at the Southern Property Law Center. I talked with the writer of the show, John Giler, about the storyline of his new play. It begins with a with a um, a liberal New Yorker who's just lost his wife to suicide. Hmm. And his very best friend, in an attempt to heal him, sends him on a mission. The friend is a civil rights worker. So he sends this forlorn guy to a little southern town to help it rid itself of its Confederate statue. Uh, unfortunately, the mayor of the town is a very conservative black woman who is, has no interest in getting rid of the statue. And on top of everything else, is a sort of a cold person who's never been in love in her life. And the northern visitor is a sort of a dreamer and a romantic who falls in love at the drop of the hat. And so they have this, this strange love affair ensues that sucks the entire town, black and white, into it, all of whom have a stake in whether or not it succeeds. And the cast is uh, astonishing, really. The, the two lovers are played by... Um, Tim Blake Nelson, whom you may know from uh, movies like Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? and various other things. And Gloria Rubin, who actually played Condoleezza Rice in uh, a play at the Public Theater here in New York. With so many emotions and issues intersecting, I, I can't imagine how impactful it's going to be. But I, I just have to ask, how did the partnership with the Southern Poverty Law Center, how did that form? Well, the Poverty, Southern Poverty Law Center, to me, uh, have been heroic throughout my entire lifetime. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and for a long time, they were really, I, I think, our only defense against racism and, in, in, in the modern day, right-wing extremism of every kind, homophobia, anti-immigrant feeling. And they, um, oddly enough, like the Intamon Theater, have had a lot of inner turmoil. And I mean, I, I, I sort of love this partnership between the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Intamon Theater, both of whom are fighting very formidable enemies. I mean, the Southern Poverty Law Center, of course, have been fighting the Ku Klux Klan and um, really dreadful actors for a long time. The Intamon Theater, like any theater, is fighting the challenge of, of making art. You, though, have had a new enemy in COVID. What have you learned in the past year? You mean as I've been chained to my writing desk and... Uh, Indeed. That's a great question. I, I think that we, um, you know, it, 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 it's forced writers to, um, to dig a little deeper, I think. The challenges of COVID and the challenges of the post-George Floyd era have really instilled in all of us a feeling of um, this is getting serious now. Yeah. No more drawing room situation comedies. Let's only do, let's only write things that are of urgency to us because the time is short. The theater has always had this incredible ability to put a spotlight on an issue and involve the viewer in a world that they may have never experienced. Can you speak to the power of that emotional education? The best kind of theater is, is the kind that, that um, gets inside your emotional wheelhouse and rattles you a little bit, frankly. Mm -hmm. And you ought to, if not lurch out of the theater, at least you ought to sort of, you know, the, when you step outside on the street, it doesn't look exactly the same as it did before you stepped in. I think that's, it's an ambitious goal, um, but I think that that, that is the goal. Otherwise, why bother, really? You know? But what for you do you hope most that people take away from this play? As we look at this love affair that is struggling to exist between a white man and a black woman, can this gap ever be bridged? I mean, it, it's, it's a little frustrating, frankly, because the Civil War has been over for 150 years. It's been 70 years since Brown versus the Board of Education. And we have sent, put people on the moon and we can do <clears throat> laser surgery on your knee in 30 seconds. But we seem to have made so little real progress in bridging this gap between 
between the races in this country. In fact, in some ways it's worse and it's incredibly frustrating and heartbreaking to a lot of us. So, um, gosh, I'd love, I'd love for people to leave the theater thinking that this, pro this, this problem is immense and has to be addressed, but that there might be a ray of hope and that maybe we can do it. Because frankly, I don't think we can go on without addressing it. Yeah. I mean, it's no longer, for, and for white people especially, I no longer think it's a matter of simply being sympathetic or understanding or comprehending. I think we have to get it at a cellular level and think that we are truly all brothers and sisters and we cannot move along unless we all move along. And I think that's, you know, that's the point for, for all of us now. And you can find the link for tickets on New Day's website. The virtual event is Thursday, June 24th at 5 p.m. There is a suggested ticket price as all proceeds from the show will be donated to the Southern Poverty Law Center.